Oh, sunny days did not last here in Colorado. Despite it officially being spring, another wintry storm has made its way to the metro. You're looking live at the Nine News backyard in the city of Denver, where you can just see that snow falling and falling and falling. Earlier today, it was bringing hail to places like Arvada. Now those conditions have changed to snow and will continue throughout the night. We have team coverage tonight following this storm. Brianna Clark is in the southern metro in Castle Rock. Angeline McCall is in the foothills of Golden. We'll hear from them in just a minute, but first straight to meteorologist Chris Bianchi for the very latest. All right, thanks, Jenny. And you, uh, we're talking about some pretty decent snow that's already fallen. Most of us at two inches plus across the metro area right now. Nederland at four inches, northwest Denver three inches, three and a half for us in Fort Collins and Arvada at two and a half already. And folks, we're probably still talking about another three, four hours of this kind of heavier snowfall that's setting on in. I'm going to show it to you on HE Doppler radar in just a second. Highest totals west and south of downtown, most likely to see at least three inches, three to six inches, and some areas will see certainly more than that. Again, the heaviest snow between about now and 1 a.m. So a few more hours of this heavier stuff to go. And we're seeing kind of that snow set on up here right along the I-25 corridor. Now, kind of one thing to kind of zero, in, uh, zero on in on. If you're joining me from Arvada on up to Broomfield, down through Lakewood, uh, really kind of west of I-25 and uh, uh, getting out towards the, uh, 470 along Highway 6 here. That's where you're seeing this band of very intense snowfall. This is likely one inch per hour snowfall, if not maybe an inch and a quarter uh, per hour snowfall. So that's where we're going to probably get some of those highest totals out of that band. It's same here on the south side of the metro area. Downtown, this is moderate snowfall. We we're just showing you the Nine News backyard. Uh, it's, a, it's doing pretty decently out here. But again, it's this little narrow band right in here sitting on up just to the west of downtown that will produce some of those highest totals. South of town, seeing steady snow basically everywhere. And also northern Colorado. This is going to end up being our upset zone where we end up with a few inches of snow for us. Uh, already about three inches I mentioned for us at Fort Collins. Seeing some of that snow fall into the mountains right now. Temperatures on the cold side. This will mean rapid accumulation. Temperatures down into the mid-20s for most of us. And over the next few hours, any of that rain right now in southern Colorado flips over to snow. By tomorrow morning, that snow ends for us, but with some leftover flurries. But we've still got a few more inches of snow to go. I'm going to show you some of those updated estimated snowfall totals coming up for you in my full forecast. All right, Chris, thank you. This afternoon, it was just rain hitting Castle Rock. This is Voda video from I-25 heading southbound around 5 o'clock. That rain, though, has now turned to snow, and the roads are getting messy. 9 News reporter Brianna Clark is live for us in Castle Rock tonight. How's it looking there? It is wet, it is slushy, it is snowy, it is messy, it's cold, it's everything pretty much tonight. It started snowing about four hours ago, but within this last hour is when it really started to accumulate, especially on the roadways. We've seen several plows come through here, plows down, scraping this roadway. Cars are going slow, so if you have to be out on the road, take it easy. So we've seen that wind. This is what's really impacting the visibility here. The wind is picking up, the snowflakes start flying, and it's really hard to see what's in front of you. Castle Rock police right now are on accident alert, which means they will only respond to certain accidents. If it involves injuries, if someone's under the influence, if it's a hit and run, those types of situations. If you find yourself in a fender bender, they ask that you file your own complaint online with Colorado State Patrol and to exchange your information with the other person. Douglas County Schools right now, they are monitoring the weather. School starts tomorrow for the first time since they came back from spring break. That spring break might be lasting a little bit longer if they do have a snow day tomorrow. So parents, keep your eyes on that. As of now, it's still up in the air. And the big concern is that morning commute. So it all depends on how long the snow falls for, how much wind comes, and how much accumulation is on that roadway. So folks, if you're going to be out, just go slow. It is very, very hard to see. All right, Brianna Clark for us in uh, Castle Rock tonight. Thank you, Brianna. Now out west, the foothills are under a winter storm warning tonight for an area that already got hit hard by the last storm now rolling through, and they're going to see another decent amount of snow again tonight. Angeline McCall is live for us in Golden tonight. Angeline, how's it looking there? Well, the one thing I can tell you that we're, you know, experiencing now is that it's much colder than when we were out earlier today, this afternoon, even just an hour ago. And you can really just see so much more snow also falling and then that accumulation on the ground, something that Brianna also talked about down in Castle Rock. 
Look at the roads though, uh, a little slushy. You could actually, I, I stepped on um, just on the side over here just to see what it was like. And over here it's really wet still. So even there's uh, water on the roadway too going into the storm drains. That was something that we noticed earlier today, particularly down in the southwestern portion of Denver towards Inglewood and outskirts of Inglewood as well, is that we saw a lot of water on the roadway after hail in that area because there's just so much water content in what's coming out of the sky right now with the hail that was earlier today, as well as the snow. Like Brianna mentioned, we just want to reiterate to take it slow on the roads. Something that I, uh, a conversation I had with a gentleman, a homeowner earlier today was that his concern is just, you know, with sitting water on the ground like this for several hours, then what you're going to see later on this um, evening or tomorrow morning potentially is you're going to see snow covering potentially ice. So that's going to be on your driveways when you're shoveling as well as when you're driving. So just keep that in mind. Jenny. All right, Angeline Forrest and Golden tonight. Thank you. This storm is causing some real headaches for people flying out late in and out of DIA. The airport's seen more than 450 flights delayed today with about 74 of those coming just within the last few hours. To your other headlines tonight. Commerce City Police are trying to figure out who's responsible for a shooting at a house party overnight. One man died, two others were injured. Police believe the driver of this truck may have been involved in that shooting. It's a white, single cab, older model pickup truck. That shooting happened a little before 2 o'clock this morning at a home off East 69th near Rocky Mountain Arsenal. Police believe that this started after dozens of people showed up to a house party. One of the neighbors says the sound of gunfire woke him up and then he found bullets inside his home. I couldn't get any sleep, you know, it was just, it, it was that dramatic and that intense. Uh, I guess even just talking about it kind of chokes you up a little bit, you know. But we're, we're good and thank God we didn't get hit. You know, things can be repaired, but I think lives lost, you, how do you repair that? give you one more look at that truck again. If you happen to recognize this or if you have information about the shooting, please call Commerce City Police at the number on your screen, 303-289-3626. Police in Thornton are searching for a driver who hit and killed a pedestrian and then took off. Police say it happened around 6 o'clock this morning on East 120th, about a mile west of Colorado Boulevard. That victim died on scene. Now, police are looking for a gray car with front end damage. If you have any information, please call Thornton Police at that number on your screen, 720-977-5069. The Federal Avi Aviation Administration is increasing oversight of United Airlines after several safety incidents in recent weeks. The agency made that announcement on yesterday. Some of those safety concerns include a plane sliding off a runway, a tire falling off during a plane's takeoff, and hydraulic system issues on several planes. In a memo that went to United employees, airline officials say the FAA will be reviewing their facilities, their manuals, and their work processes. Also, quick reminder for anybody driving on I-76, plan for delays. Crews are still working on the Dahlia Street Bridge in Commerce City. Last Monday, a tractor trailer hit that bridge, causing some damage and closures. CDOT says the work to fix that bridge will take months and the northbound lane on the bridge will stay closed all the way until fall. But even with that lane closed, CDOT says the bridge is still safe to drive on. It was a mixed bag of results for the CU Buffs in the NCAA tournament. Both the men and the women played today in the second round action, battling for a chance to move on to the Sweet 16. The CU women took care of business, defeating four seed Kansas State on their home court by a final score of 63 to 50. Now they're headed to their second straight Sweet 16, where they will face the winner of Iowa and West Virginia. If Iowa wins, this will be a rematch of last year's Sweet 16. Iowa won that game by 10 points. Unfortunately, the men could not get it done in their game today. They lost to two seed Marquette in a very close game, 81-77 the final. Their season is now over, but they did set a record with 26 wins this year. We'll have more CU coverage coming up in sports and on overtime.